Okay, it's like Cajun bacon butter or bacon Cajun butter. Cajun bacon butter. I like that better too. Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is grilled oysters with Cajun bacon butter. That's right, today we're cooking up fresh oysters on the half shell along with a compound butter that's packed full of Cajun spices and bits of bacon that just melt around that oyster while it's cooking on the grill. So delicious. Now this is a meal that comes together so quick and easy. You could do it any night of the week, but to be honest, it would be a waste to not have some friends and family around experiencing this with you. This is great for those backyard barbecues where everyone's just gathered around the grill, you're experiencing the visuals, you're getting the aromas, and it goes so quick that you're eating before you know it. Now we are gonna be cooking over charcoal today, so the first thing we gotta do is fire it up. Today we're cooking on the PK Grills 300 AF, stands for Aaron Franklin, and we're gonna get started with a chimney full of lump charcoal. I'm gonna light up some fire starters underneath the chimney. You can use this or you could just ball up a whole bunch of paper and hope that it lasts until everything's lit. Chimney and lump charcoal right on top. So while the grill's heating up, we're gonna shuck our oysters. And uh, the way I like to do this is usually with a cotton glove underneath uh, a nitrile just in case, you know, things get a little crazy. Uh, you can have a towel on hand to make sure that you don't slip and hurt yourself, but here at this tip where everything hinges, you're gonna find a nice little hole. Work your oyster knife in there, and I do recommend getting one of these oyster knives. They're 15, 20 bucks. Um, and then just give it a little wiggle until it pops. You're gonna try to keep any shell from going inside. And we're just gonna lift that top part off. So that oyster's sitting right there in the bottom. No need to release it from the shell. Uh, we're gonna put some butter in there. You're gonna eat this out with a fork anyway. So it's not like we're fresh slurping here. Uh, really all we gotta do is get that top shell off. So these oysters that we're using, these are blue point oysters. Uh, and one thing I've come across with blue point oysters is sometimes you get pea crabs that live inside of there. This one doesn't have one, but I can show you what one looks like. It's that little guy right there. They live inside the oyster shell and feed off the food that the oyster brings in. Um, and while it might seem kind of gross if you're not used to it, you can totally eat these. At one time, these little soft-bodied pea crabs were actually considered a delicacy. In fact, according to the internet, it's one of George Washington's favorite foods. For, you know, take that for what it's worth. Uh, I'm not gonna eat it though. I'm gonna take it out. All right, charcoal is hot. We're gonna get this dumped all to one side so we have a direct and indirect cooking zone. Now immediately I wanna get a few green onions on here. These are gonna go into our Cajun bacon butter and I just wanna get a little char on those. But those won't take long. The other thing I wanna do here immediately, we're gonna get our little pot over the charcoal and start cooking down our bacon. Now this bacon's just been finely diced up. That's four slices of your typical classic cut bacon just diced down small. We're gonna let that render out and get crispy. Bacon's been on for about five minutes. You can see we're getting nice and crispy, getting that rendered out. So we're gonna pull this off the grill. Now that the bacon's done, we're gonna go ahead and put together our compound butter. Just gonna take off the ends of our green onions that we grilled. These are softened up a little bit, but still have a nice little bit of bite to them. So we're gonna get that really nice char and then the fresh onion flavor as well. Everything's gonna be minced down pretty small because oysters aren't all that big, so we can't put anything too big and chunky in our butter. Otherwise, that's all you taste when you get that bite. We wanna taste the oyster, but we wanna enhance it with a really flavorful butter. So that's going in with a half cup or one stick of unsalted 
softened butter. Now, unsalted butter is important. We don't want too much salt in here. Oysters are already salty. Bacon is salty. In fact, I went with a lower sodium bacon just so that we don't overwhelm it. And then when we put our Cajun seasoning in there, that's also going to have salt. In order to not overwhelm that flavor profile, you want to start with some items that definitely are low or no salt. Next, we've got some fresh garlic. I'm just going to mince this down on the microplane so it's almost to a paste consistency. That way, again, we're not biting into big chunks of raw, you know, be it onion or garlic or whatever. We're looking for about a teaspoon and a half. Next, we're gonna take the zest off of a lemon. And this is also gonna go in our butter just to kind of keep, keep things bright. I know we've got a little bit of freshness out of the green onion. Um, but just to add a little extra freshness, a little citrus, uh, a little lemon zest goes a long way. And then we're just gonna get a little bit of lemon juice in here as well. Catching the seeds. Just about a half teaspoon, not much. Next we've got our Cajun seasoning, the Cattleman's Grill Cajun Fusion. We're gonna do one tablespoon of this. So this is where you get your salt, you get some white and black pepper, of course that paprika, some basil, thyme, all of those great oregano, thing, all of those things that you think of with Cajun cooking packed into that seasoning. Next we've got the Cattleman's Grill Pit Fire Hot Sauce, which is not terribly hot, but it is a great kind of southern style vinegar based hot sauce. Great vinegar twang to it. Do a teaspoon and a half of that. And then finally, we've got our bacon, which has cooled down here a bit. Now we just got to mix it all up. So a lot of times with compound butters, once you get past this point, you're going to want to form this into a log, let it set up in the fridge until it's firm and chilled down. But today, we don't need to worry about that because we're just going to dollop this right on top of our oysters. So once it's fully mixed, it's ready to go. Next, we're going to take our butter and just put a nice big dollop right on top of the raw oyster. See, I like that the butter is kind of room temp here, softened up, because we don't have to wait any time at all for it to melt down and just almost, almost like a, a confit action where this, these oysters are just going to be surrounded in our Cajun bacon butter. The charcoal is still plenty hot. I can't keep my hand there for more than about two or three seconds, which is what we're looking for. You want some nice, intense, direct heat underneath the oysters. And this is gonna be the way to transport them. Get some tongs. You're gonna hold them from the end here. It's about the best way to make sure you don't burn yourself in the process. Try and keep them as upright as possible. You are gonna lose some liquid. You are gonna lose some butter. Don't stress about it. Just try to get them positioned as best you can. And the whole point of the butter being in there on top of just adding all that extra flavor is to keep these nice and juicy so that once that natural oyster juice that's in there kind of begins to cook out, that's when these wanna come off. And there's still plenty of butter left in there to keep them juicy. I'm going to close the door just for about 30 seconds here, just to get that butter melting on top. We'll go ahead and close this down right above. That way all that heat's just kind of trapped there. So this is exactly what we're looking for. You want to see all that liquid bubbling all the way around the oyster, just long enough to get that thing cooked a little bit through. We don't want these rubbery. So these are definitely going to come off in stages. They just need, it depends on how hot you're cooking, but as you can see, the stuff on the right here is not getting done nearly as quickly. Um, but they're going to need a good probably three to five minutes at this simmer once you've reached that point. So as these kind of finish, we're moving them off to indirect heat. Very little heat at all over there right now. Just trying to take care not to... Uh, 
lose any of these juices. I'm gonna keep as much of that butter and oyster juice in there as possible. This right here is pretty ideal. After it's been bubbling away, some of that's reduced down. Your oyster is tender, not tough. That's what we're looking for. We're gonna finish these off with just a little bit of minced parsley right on top. Help break up some of that fatty, buttery goodness. And as soon as these are cool enough to handle, they're ready to eat. So we're gonna go at this with a fork. I don't have one of those really cute little ones, but this will have to do. I'll get as much on there as I can. Mmm. Such briny goodness. I can't leave any of that behind. Boy, the crunch of the bacon. That really stands out. If you're not used to having such a wild textural difference in an oyster, so that crunch is really nice. It breaks up that texture of the oyster, which, you know, here just three to five minute cook, still nice and soft, not tough or chewy or anything like that. And while you get some of that natural salinity uh, out of the oyster, that saltiness, it's covered really well by the fatty butter just fully encased in it. I gotta get another one of these. And then there's this brightness from the lemon, from that little bit of lemon juice and zest. That garlic butter though, man. That's where it's at. Well, thank, <laughs> woo, misfired. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.